Good morning. Glad to see you this morning. It's Monday morning, January the 18th, the year 2021. Hope you're off to a good start this week. Um, I think you picked up on from last week that I have decided, at least for right now, to stick with uh, Facebook for a while longer. And uh, with that, there's no explanation needed. We're just going to stay in here as long as we can until the Lord moves us. Um, but uh, <clears throat> Uh, I am aware, I want you to know, I am aware of what all is going on, and uh, uh, we're going to stick with it a little bit longer here. Uh, so with that said, we're looking at the seven churches in the book of Revelation, and uh, this morning we're going to look at the church in Sardis, uh, the church in Sardis. Now, the, the uh, uh, as we said, all seven churches have three different aspects to them. They were actual churches in Asia Minor that uh, John was told to send these messages or these letters to actual churches. Uh, it could also be said that these uh, seven churches comprise a panoramic view of all of church history uh, from the time of Pentecost roughly to, to the rapture. And, uh, <clears throat> and then there's another way in which you could say that there are these churches in every age, these kinds of churches in every age. And then there's a little bit of a personal aspect to it that uh, there can be people like these churches in every church of every age. And uh, so last week uh, we looked, the last thing we looked at was the white stone. And I know you were breathlessly awaiting the, uh, for me to tell you what name was written on the white stone. And remember I said, uh, I wouldn't say it if the Lord didn't say it. And he says, nobody knows that but you. And so uh, you'll find out the what's written on your stone, your white stone, when you get to glory. But uh, I think the great thing to know is that everybody that overcomes by the blood of the Lamb is going to receive a white stone. So you'll get one. It'll have your own personalized name on it, whatever it is. So, all right. So we're into chapter three this morning, and we're going to be looking at the uh, the church in Sardis. Uh, and... Uh, the time span for this one is roughly, basically these last three ones, all of them could go to the rapture. But this is basically the period of about 1700 to 1900, uh, if you're looking at it as a, as a uh, panorama of church history. This is the, the Reformation period, roughly corresponding to the, to the Reformation period. And uh, <clears throat> so let's begin and just read through chapter three, the first few verses um, to the angel of the church in Sardis. He said, to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Now there's a reminder again that he is holding us, that he walks among the churches, that he knows what we're going through. And he said, he's the word, these are the words of him. He identifies himself as, as Lord Jesus. These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God. There's a reference to the perfection of the Holy Spirit and the seven stars, the messengers of the angels in the churches. And he said, I know. And, and he starts every one of them that way. I know. So don't think you're going through something of which God is not aware because he's walking with us and he knows what's going on. So he said, I know your deeds. Now listen to this. You have a reputation of being alive. Wow, just think, doesn't every church want a good community uh, uh, image of themselves? Don't we want to look good in the community? Uh, preachers want to have a good reputation among churches and among their fellow pastors, and uh, we strive for that. He says, uh, I know you, and I know your reputation. Uh, somebody has said that reputation is what other people think you are. And uh, uh, reality is what God knows you are. So there's a difference between reputation and reality. And he says, you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard and hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief. And there's our first reference to perhaps the rapture. 
The coming of Christ in the sky and the clouds is going to be without warning. It's going to be in a moment when you think not. There's not going to be anything to herald that. Everything that uh, must be fulfilled before the coming of Christ in the clouds, which we refer to as the rapture, everything has been fulfilled that must be fulfilled before he comes in the clouds. And so he says, uh, but if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief. And you will not know at what time I will come to you. That's what we call the imminent return of Christ. It could be at any moment. Then in verse 4, he says, Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. And I will blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my Father, and his angels. And then he goes on to say that whoever uh, has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, <clears throat> there, there are about four things here that uh, he reminds us of. He, he first of all says, reputation is not reality. Uh, as I said earlier, people want to have a good reputation. I'd rather have a reputation of saying of someone saying, I'll tell you one thing, they, they speak the truth there. They're not afraid, they're not ashamed to go against the culture if they have to because they're going to go with the truth rather than what is comfortable and what is reputable. And so he says, uh, you have a reputation of being alive, but that's not the, that's not the truth. You, you are dead. And so reputation is not reality. And then the second thing he says is that revival is still possible. No matter how far you walk away from the, the truth and, and the integrity of God's word, he said, revival is still possible. He said, you have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead. Wake up. That's revival. When the dead wakes up. And so he says, revival is still possible. I believe that's true for America. I believe revival is still possible. It may not look like what we want it to look like. There may be a whole lot more brokenness than we expect. And must some of it may be on our parts because we all got to be broken before the Lord. He said, reputation is not reality. Revival is still possible, so wake up. And then when he said, wake up, that revival is still possible, he says, remember what you've been taught. Listen to what he says in verse three. Remember, therefore, what you've received and heard. Hold it fast. You know, we live in a culture where the culture doesn't want to go back to the old way, to the old landmarks. We don't like the old hymns. We don't like the old style of preaching. We don't like this. We don't like that. Don't throw all of it out. I know there's a new culture. I know we like different things. And... Uh, uh, you know, uh, skinny jeans and uh, whatever we smoke and mirrors for worship, whatever we do. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, of uh, a lot of the trappings that go along with today's, quote, worship. Uh, but I understand that each generation has a way of worship. But let me tell you something. Don't throw away all the old stuff. Don't throw away the old hymns. Don't throw away the old uh, brimstone and uh, fire and brimstone preaching of the truth. He, he says, uh, remember therefore what you have received and heard and hold fast. The old landmarks are still there and you can approach it in a different way, but don't leave the old landmarks. Uh, so reputation is not reality. Revival is still possible. Remember what you uh, have, have been taught. And then he says, repent. Now, repent simply means stop, turn around, and go the other direction. Think it through again, literally. Think it through again and come up with a completely opposite decision. So he says, remember what you've received and hold fast and repent. And then he says, if you don't, wake up. I'll come like a thief. There's the reference to the rapture. And then he says in verse four, yet you have a few people in Sardis who've not soiled their clothes. They walk with me dressed in white. They're worthy. 
And the one who's victorious will be like them, dressed in white. That's the idea of God's righteousness on you. But here's the last thing. Reputation is not reality. Revival is still possible. Wake up. Remember what you've been taught. Repent. And know this. There will always be a remnant. You're not alone. There will always be a remnant. He said, yet you have a few people in Sardis who've not soiled their clothes. Look, let's agree together that we can be a part of the remnant rather than the one who has a reputation of being alive, but we're dead. Let's be that remnant dressed in the righteousness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. You have a great Monday today, and we'll see you in the morning. Bless you.